this is a hard talk to give because normally I would talk about my research. I would talk about what I do for a living and that would be about string theory and I would have five minutes and I would panic and you would understand nothing. So I decided instead I would not tell you about string theory but I would tell you about why I do what I want to do so that when next you have this sort of situation, you will display enthusiasm towards the person when you meet them and they tell you that they're a scientist. <laughs> so we've already heard um, from Philip about the utility of the sciences. Yes, we've got microphones, we've got projectors, we've got computers, and all of this is a brilliant reason to study physics. But this is a better reason. We are curious. We are born curious. We are all like this child who wants to know, learn, and ask questions about nature. Why do we stop? It's weird. Why is it there's a point in our life where we say, I've had enough now? I don't need to ask any more questions. The scientist doesn't. He delights in questioning and understanding. And we must embrace that thing. And I want to talk a little bit more about what we mean by this beauty that appeals to scientists, this thing which drives curiosity and makes us hungry for knowledge and in particular manifests itself in the study of physics. In particular, I want to emphasize this idea of different ways of seeing. And this is normally an argument that's given for the arts. Why is art valuable? It allows us to see the world in different ways. Well, my God, so does science. The world of relativity or quantum mechanics, or from the very small, like we have here with atoms, these individual molecules placed in places, all the way up to the biggest glob globular clusters of stars with enormous scales, enormous, huge differences from our everyday lives that we live by. The speeds of relativity we never experience, the weirdness and probabilistic nature of quantum mechanics we never see. And yet there is this window into that world that is given to you by understanding its theoretical nature. Feynman said this thing, which I love. Nothing is mere about those pictures. Do you see more or less by understanding them? There is this vast pattern, he says, of which I am a part. There is this incredible humanity in realizing the scale and diversity of nature from the small to the big, and yet embracing the fact you're still part of it. There are some weird ideas in theoretical physics. There's the unreasonable effectiveness of mathematics. Why do we study maths? We study maths because it works, but why should nature be mathematical? Physics challenges our assumptions, and this is the main point. We have to constantly be aware of the things in the corner of our eye that we always took for granted and challenge those things. As examples go by, I'm going to still emphasize on that. We take so many things for granted, we don't even question them. Learning to do that is incredibly valuable and attractive to us, and that's what we should all be doing. This is an example which I really like. When you were first taught physics, did you ever ask why you're living in three dimensions? It's because we've never lived anywhere else. We can't imagine it being different. And yet, there are lots of examples now where we have to question that, where we have to think, yes, we can live in more dimensions. Those dimensions may be hidden, who knows? But it's through challenging those assumptions that we then get at new ideas. And this is central to the heart of string theory, where our fundamental building blocks are not point-like like the Greeks had. The idea of an atom, this point, that was this assumption that was always there in your heads. But no, they have extension. It has consequences. It unifies matter and forces, gives a scale to nature, gives us extra dimensions, lots of new stuff that's exciting, a new way of looking at the world. And this whole way of challenging, I'm coming back to again, our view of the world, and a way that also combines with it symmetries. Deep mathematics in a view of nature is ridiculously attractive. So in the end, take this with you. 
Look at the world and ask questions. Return to your childhood. Look at all the hidden assumptions you've always made and keep on looking at them. Be liberated by the scale and size of the universe and do not worry about making money. Thank you very much.